Um, yeah, it proved to be more difficult than we would have thought, and certainly a lot more difficult than it should have been, or took a lot longer than it should have taken, because, in fact, uh, it ought not to have been difficult. It wasn't, it wasn't a difficult thing to address. Uh, what you needed was changed regulations, um, because those were the regulations that were released in 2014, shortly after my uh, commencement of my term as Minister of Tourism. Um, kicked in in 2015, there was a kind of a year allowing people to adjust. But of course, it uh, combined with maybe a few other factors, it uh, contributed towards uh, an immediate downward trend, the visa difficulties, um, combined with Ebola actually, which um, I know I'm going, we're going a bit beyond your question, should not have been a factor, but it was a big factor because of perception. Uh, we didn't have a single case of Ebola in South Africa, but it, it was a factor. Um, the in 2016 nice recovery, but clearly, you know, with the visa difficulties, it should have been much greater recovery. So, from having been known as a family friendly destination, and of course, upon arrival in South Africa, it is family friendly, but we made it difficult for families to come to South Africa, or, or parents, single parents, especially single parents or adults, traveling with minors who are not necessarily their children. Uh, but for all minors coming to South Africa, there were these requirements, whether we, you're with both parents or not with both parents. <coughs> so we started the, I shouldn't go on for too long, but we, we started the process immediately and say, look, let's, um, let's revisit that. But the, I'm afraid, as often happens, the human factor, perhaps the uh, initiators of the regulations, who no doubt were doing it in good faith, uh, to combat uh, child, tra child trafficking and they thought they just had done the absolutely right thing, ta not taking into account realities and the impact on tourism, etc. To get them to accept that um, it was unnecessary and it was having a, a, a seriously negative effect, impact on, on tourism, that took a while. The president, who by the way will be ar arriving here tomorrow, who was deputy president at the time, he helped, he helped to try to mediate, and we were making progress. Um, and we had cabinet decisions about you know, what the new regulations should say, should say. And we specifically quoted the UK, UK and Canada, to say, well, why don't we bring it in line with what the UK does? And that is, instead of making it a hard requirement, um, there's a kind of an advice, should there be any grounds for suspicion, you know, just um, because of you know, traveling with a minor and, um, and it's only one parent, you may be asked to prove the relationship. You And so that advisory note went out. We've got it verbatim. And, and, and we said, look, you know, let's do the same. Finally, end of the long road, I'm not going to go through all of the difficulties. I also had a, a period of sabbatical in the middle of the term. <laughs> but the, um, we, we got there in November last year to the point where we had proposed, a changed, a revised regulations to the Department of Home Affairs, a uh, bit of a backwards and forwards, but finally they released the um, revised regulations, and the revised regulations still stand, they're fine. The problem is that the advisory issued by that very department um, contradicted the, the own new regulations. So the advisory note, which is what the immigration of officials read, uh, it's what the airlines read. Um, got it a bit wrong, frankly. So we had to go back to the drawing board, board and then finally they did get it right. Um, airlines were a bit tidy in their response, and that was the problem even, even after that. Airlines were still, in, in fact, we, we had engaged with airlines. We've said, whatever the advisory is, this is the law. These are the regulations. Uh, you don't need to have to demand, you don't need to demand this documentation when people check in. You do what you do with any other country. You want to see the passport, and if a visa is required, you want to check the visa and the ticket, that's it. And, uh, but no, they were, they were insistent. And it was only about a week ago that IATA finally uh, sent out uh, an advisory. So I think it's, it's up to you guys, uh, and sorry to say that, all of us collectively, to send out the message, and to send the message to every travel agent to say, look, this is the requirements, these are the requirements, uh, because they really are. Quite some, quite, quite, there, there will be some teething problems um, in the sense that immigration officials need to be properly trained. You need to know, and, and, and the, uh, it seems like a good case study 
uh, would be the U UK immigration officers, or so I'm told anyway. Uh, and that is, when you say um, requesting the documentation would be done by, by exception, um, you've, you've got to be trained in how you pick up things that are grounds for suspicion, if you like, is there. Um, but but two, two parents traveling, in, in a nutshell, two, pa two adults or two parents, biological parents or not, but who are the parents of the child or children, uh, there, there's nothing required. A single parent or single adult, um, the advisory kicks in. So message from today, unequivocal or as close to unequivocal as you can you can get. It is the unabridged birth certificate. It's finished. It's no longer required. It's no longer required. And I can say it, but it depends more on you saying it and 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 you saying it to telling all the travel agents and tour operators here. Yeah. And the airlines, uh, you know, we've had to take airlines to task once in a while uh, to say, uh, British Airways included, when, you know, sometimes we just get the information that somebody was stopped at the airport and we said, but that's wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, you go, but anyway, so.